So this is it, Colony EC Details back with another episode. This one I'm excited to go over this uh, polish that I bought from Obsessed Garage. I bought it when it first launched. He made some claims and on one of those doesn't really live up to the hype. Now he did call it for beginners, but in my mind when I think of beginner polishers, I think of Shine Mate, I think of Mac Shine, I think of Reels. Those are beginner polishers to me. Uh, some that are not in a hefty $500 range. So when I think of what he said about the grease, I'll put a little snippet here from his website. Um, we're discussing the Liquid Element T4000 polisher. This polisher is uh, designed in Germany, made in China. It has a beautiful design to it. It has a Stormtrooper look. It has a nice thick bill. I've used it on five cars. It has the little indicator here to tell you we're putting too much pressure down. And I want to just go over my review of this. Uh, a couple things that, let's go over the Pro, because I think for me, if you are new and you look for a polisher, there's a whole bunch that you can find in the market that are all made in China. But if you're looking for something that lasts, that has good quality, you're in Vitamic territory, you're in the DIY polishes now, you're you're in the Shine Me for 220 bucks. This is 210. Um, I think Shine Me's a better machine, but let me go over the pros of this. First of all, the design, the elegance of the polisher, uh, it's amazing. I think the design of this product is very beautiful from a aesthetic view. You have an amazing long cord here. The cord is super long. It's got nice flexibility. So it's a nice rubber cord here. Um, you have an amazing, amazing like look. Like when you're looking at this and you see it online, that's the kind of vibe you want. The trigger itself uh, is supposed to be a, a soft trigger, but if you hear that, it's, it sounds like garbage. It's, so for the pros, beautiful, beautiful machine. Long cord, um, I'll go over the cons. When I first got my machine, I opened the box. I never had to do this with any machine. I used it live on YouTube and I did a review live with you because that was my first time using it on a curve because that's how I usually test polishers. It stalled. Now on the OG site, it mentioned that it doesn't stall. So it doesn't stall on flat panels, but any polisher doesn't stall on flat panels, but any slight curve or any type of fender that I was doing, like fenders. I'm not talking about little curves where you take a three inch, two inch. I'm talking about like fenders. Uh, it will stall, even when you're trying to balance it. Um, I do like the feel of it, it's kind of hefty. Um, but that was one of the things that I saw right away. The other thing is, make sure when you buy this, that you take this tool and you tighten the backing plate, because during a polish, the backing plate came off uh, and it was just real loose. So make sure you tighten the back and plate, check that when you buy this. Uh, I'm gonna start doing that going forward. It gave me kind of like a PTSD, but that's just, those are the cons for me. It doesn't, it doesn't hold up to the hype of it not stalling. And for me, it's super loud. And for the price point, I didn't feel like it was worth it. So in this review, I'm gonna show you a couple snippets of polishing the car. We're gonna take my Toyota Tundra here. There's a couple curves that I will not bust out a three inch polisher on. I will not. Um, we're gonna go over that. I'm gonna take the machine apart. We're gonna go over the machine itself to see if the grease is really high quality or they have enough grease for the gears because on their website, they mentioned that the grease um, is supposed to be real good. So let me take you over to the Toyota. Let's polish the section off, have some ceramic coating on. Let's go over look and feel. So what I have here is the polisher, the pad, we'll put it on together. So there is no, uh, no consideration as the pad is wrong as to not cause any doubt. The pad is on even, okay? We're gonna use Hyper Compound Hyper Polish, uh, just because I'm, I'm just cutting this for demonstration, okay? So we have Hyper Polish here now. This is the kind of cars we work, we, we work with now, right? We have this, people consider this edge work. I don't, I can get my polish like that. We have the bottom part here, not edge work as well. And then we have the little fender here and I'll, and I'll show you that. So we have the little fender here. So I'm gonna start it off here. We're gonna do a sound test at speed three and a half. All right, that's speed three and a half, okay? A little vibrating. Uh, and now look, I'm gonna come over this curve and the machine stall, right? Pad spinning, machine stalling. Now that's a little bit. That's what, like, and you're gonna say, well, it's not meant to do that. All polishers are meant to do that. I can show you with the Shine Me. With the Shine Me, I can cut this no problem without any issues. So 
So I'm going to take my polish again. And I'm going to just show you from this curb here so you can see what I'm talking about. So if I'm holding at an angle, the pad's not hitting this. So I'm so over here. And it's solid. Even when you try to keep it straight, try to keep the feet balanced, even when you're holding it like that, the pad is solid at a three. So that, that stalls at a three. Now I'm gonna put it on a four and a half here, just just to show you a four and a half. And it's still falling now, it's turning. And it's still having a hard time. So I'm gonna do a six. And now at a six at this angle, I'm getting it to spin no problem. I don't like to use my machine there. Oh, any machine, uh, if I'm being 100% honest with you, right? So let me show you the indicators here. Uh, so when you turn it on, let me put this here. When you turn it on, you get the light, the green light that goes on. I'll show you this. If I put too much pressure, it'll turn red. See the red right here? So it'll turn red um, at a four. So the vibration, I will give it from a five to 10. It's a Scale of one to ten, I would say it vibrates at a four. So it's not it's not as bad as like the Mac shot, right? When you have it, when you have it equal, or when you have it on a flat panel, you get it rotates no problem. No, if you take to get a curve here, like I would do edge work here, or this little ramp, you know, it starts to stall, and you can see the black back and plate stall. So th those are my main concerns. This machine is just the, the stalling is is noticeable, so as bad as the old roof is. Okay, let's talk about the ergonomics. I like the build of this the build. This one, this piece I'm talking about. So I can put my hands comfortable. I'm super comfortable at this position. Super comfortable here. Um, it's easy. And it's super comfortable. And I can come down and move the machine like that's comfortable to me. This being here, I think that's a great choice that they did, uh, Liquid did. Um, one of the other things that I'm noticing with this machine too is uh, it gets a tiny hot, but all machines do a little bit of hot right here in between where this gadget is, so it'll heat. So keep your hand here, you'll be fine. Uh, a couple other things I wanna talk about is trigger start. So if I come here and I press the trigger, you see, it doesn't start. I have to press it for like a second before it begins to spin the back play look. So I don't like that. I don't like that clicking of no action. It should click and start. I have to hold it for it to start. So that's, that's my only wall with that is the clicking. Not started so that's not good either remember it's 200 it's 210 dollar machine but shine mate will click right no problem if you press the button on a shine mate it's going to start up uh but yeah that's that's my only wall i wanted to demonstrate the problems i was having on this panel on just a corner i would never take a three inch to this ever that's a waste of my time uh as a professional as a detailer and i do about 10 cars a month polishing i would never do that uh any beginner starting off not, is not going to buy all the tools so does that mean that it's not cutting? No, that's, I want I want us to, to really talk about that. Anytime you're using the polisher, it's going to do two movements. It's gonna oscillate and it's gonna rotate. It's the rotation that's being stopped. For me, when the rotation stops, it starts to cut evenly and I have to go back and do the work. That's my only wall. All right. So you saw my demonstration of the polisher. Now I'm gonna take it apart for you. We're gonna look at the internals of the polisher just to see if what he said about the grease is a real thing or not. Um, they said they use high quality grease in their in their polishers. So for me, high quality grease is packed well. Uh, it's hitting all the gears, there's no dry spots. So I'm gonna take this off and then we're gonna go through and we're gonna take this off together and discuss it. So the first thing you wanna do anytime you're taking a polisher apart is uh, you wanna take the backing plate off. Now when you take the backing plate off, after you spin it, you wanna make sure 
uh, that you're able to tighten that up again after the first couple spins because it will get loosened um, and you don't want problems down the road. I'm gonna take the, the backing plate off. Uh, you see four screws here. You can tell the, the four screws you wanna get. Take this screw off. I have a tray here where I'm gonna put all my screws. I'll bring that tray on the table so I have it right here, okay? It has a washer too. Put that piece in here and thread them. Just take your time. Two, this should be, this should come off like that. So I wanna walk through, then remember they said to use high quality grease, it's pat grease, things of that nature. What do you see? What do you see, look. What does that look like? So, uh, the grease is very minimal in this machine. Very minimal, there's not a lot. There's actually none on the gear. If you look at the gear here, uh, it has minimal grease. Now, for me, for me, I'm gonna replace that. But for them to say that they have quality grease and I'm getting the same kind of grease that I would with any other machine that I get from China, it's kind of disheartening. So that's that. So while I change the grease, it's not a grease changing video. I am gonna change the grease in this. We'll give it another go to see if that'll help it, help lower the sound. But this, this, that is not good grease. That, while I'm here doing this, I just wanna show you that this is grinding. It's grinding on the on, the, on its gears. So I have to take it off. Um, I have to use this to scoop up the non-existent grease. You know, their high temp grease that they said they use quality of. Um, you can tell there's some metaling, metal dusting, cause it's, it's uh, hitting, it's bare metal. So that grease is no bueno kids. So what you wanna do is just empty the grease. Um, we're gonna change it with red line here. Shout out to Tim McLaughlin, he gave me that. Uh, you just go in, you can clean it off. You can use APC to clean it. And then we're gonna fill it. We're just gonna pack it with good high temp grease. Get all the gears and the gear that you want to get, make sure that it's greased up is that one. That has all the grease out there. So what I typically do is I take my screwdriver, I am going to come in and I'm just gonna pack it with grease. Okay, it's packed that all the gears are touching. I'll clean that up, right? That all the gears uh, have grease on them. Always keep your area clean, okay? This is, be professional. I'm gonna hit this, I usually put to grease on this part. Cover that up, make sure there's no metal rubbing. Uh, I'm gonna hit that like that. I always go in and out, make sure it's covered. And then that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna finish putting this together and we'll test it. What we did, so we're on the same page. I went, I used red line grease, used the grease, I took it apart, I cleaned out the machine. The machine did not have a lot of grease in it, like they claimed on their website here, quality grease, not sure what that means, but uh, I re-greased it. Let's go over sound test, shall we? So this is the polisher, this is speed one. Quiet, speed two, speed three so you can see it with quality grease. Polish on it. We have it on speed three and a half. Even when I press the trigger in now, it's more responsive, you see that? It's starting to move. Look, look, before I would press this, it wouldn't move right away. It's starting to move, let's go. Right. The vacuum plate is spinning. As before, it is spinning. At the curve here, the vacuum plate is spinning. 
Back of plate. Nope. There we go. That's speed five. Look how much quieter that is in speed three. This is when I put pressure down, it doesn't stall. Yeah, change the grease. If you buy this, spend another $30, change the grease or save for a different machine. But if you do this and you change the grease, the experience, the experience, look. Look how much quieter that is. Look. Way quieter. Way quieter. Let me ask a question, Eddie, do you recommend this polisher? And I wanna be very honest, for the looks, the polisher is very beautiful. Um, for the aesthetics, the bag you get, um, you get some spare parts. For the indicator here, that tells you if you're pressing too hard down or a squirt happening. I think that's super smart, super wise. Um, I would say if you're starting out and you want to have a look in your garage, sure, get this. If you are trying to progress into a professional detailer, Brilt is a better machine than this. Shine Me is a better machine than this uh, for the same cost or cheaper. Uh, this machine to me stalls too much. Uh, didn't have enough grease in it. Uh, even my Shine Mate when I got it had more grease than this did. Uh, and then for me, the noise up front is horrible. The pros of this is beautiful. It's got great ergonomics with the bill on top. Uh, the cord is very long, so you don't need an extension cord if you're working in a smaller garage. Um, and that's the benefit of it, and the look is unparalleled. And in my own opinion, than this one. So take that for what it's worth. I did buy this with my own money. I do support Chess Garage. I bought Pressaw, I bought Mosmatic, but I bought this thinking, dude, if he says it's good, he told me the Merca was good and I didn't believe it until I bought it. And the Merc is touched by God. So thanks for watching. I want to appreciate you for watching. Uh, this video took a long time to make, breaking the machine down, doing tests here, doing a test there, doing five uh, total polishes plus with this on different cars to get the feel of it for different curves. So if you like this kind of content, hit the like, the subscribe. Appreciate you for watching. Road to 10,000, huge giveaway. With that, this is Eddie Cole. I'm out. Be safe.